What's going on guys? In today's tutorial, we are going to take a look at layers and how they work inside of the Affinity applications, such as Affinity Publisher, Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. And the reason I'm combining all three of these applications into this one video is because the layers function works exactly the same way across all three of those programs. And it's not worth making three individual videos based on the same subject. So right now I am inside of Affinity Publisher V2 and the reason I've chose Affinity Publisher is because we can switch our personas just up here on the left hand side so I can take you straight into Designer as well as Photo without having to open up those individual applications. So if we take a look at the screen in front of us, we can see that we have four playing cards and this is what I'm going to use to explain to you how layers work. So if we make our way over to the right hand side, inside of here we have our layer studio panel, which consists of these four playing cards that we have. We've got the king there, the queen, the jack and the ten. And the way you got to think of layers is almost like putting a stack of playing cards together. So say for instance you guys placed all of your cards into a deck and you laid them down on the table. What would happen is you'll be able to see the king as that will be on the top of your card stack. Whereas you wouldn't be able to see any of the other cards as they would be underneath the king. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll select all of these. And I'm just going to center all of these cards. That way it'll stack them on top of each other. And now we can see that we have our king on the top, but we can't see any of the other playing cards. But if we turn that off, we'll now see the queen underneath that. If we turn the queen off, we got the jack. Then if we turn the jack off, we've got the 10, which is going to be the bottom of our stack. And this will become important to know once you start putting multiple layers in your design and you start having some things on top of others and you want to arrange them in a certain way. So what I'm going to do is quickly just undo that so I can go ahead and continue with this tutorial. OK, so moving on, the first thing we're going to talk about is selecting your layers, which we can go ahead and do this in two different ways. We can either select any one of these layers, which are going to be our objects, just by simply clicking on our mouse and selecting any of these. And with our move tool selected just up here on the left hand side, we are free to move them around however we like. And the other way of selecting your layers is just over here in the layer studio panel. You can go ahead and select any of those with your mouse. Then once again, just move them around if you want to. And if you have any of your layers selected and you want to deselect those layers, all you've got to do is hit escape on your keyboard, just like that. Or alternatively, you can deselect any of your objects just by clicking anywhere over here on the gray. You can also do that on the white area, but at some point you may have a background image there. So if you try to deselect from one of these objects, you may select the image in the background. So it's always best just to deselect over in the gray area or just to make it quick and easy, just hit that escape key. So if you'd like to select more than one layer or object at a time, the way that you would do that is by selecting your first object, hold down shift on your keyboard and select any of the others. That way you can select all three of those together and move them around as one. And with all of those still highlighted and selected, if we hold down shift again, we can go ahead and select that fourth one and add that as well. And now we can move all four of them together. Then once again, just hit escape to deselect all of your objects. And another way that we can select all of our layers or objects at the same time is over in our layers panel. We can simply select the king just here at the top. And if we hold down command or control, we select the 10 at the bottom, then that will select both of those and we can move them around freely as we did before. And once again, holding down command or control, you can add additional ones and start moving that around. Or if you want to go ahead and select all of these at the same time, what you want to do is select your king at the top or whatever layer you guys may have at the top. Hold down shift and select the 10 at the bottom. That way it will select everything in between automatically. And now you can go ahead and move that around just like we did before. So if you find that you have all of your layers in the wrong order, where maybe you have your 10 on the top, but you want the king to be there, then all we got to do is select any one of these layers that we want to move. Simply drag down with your mouse till you see this big blue bar appear at the bottom of it. Then go ahead and just let that go. Then that will move your layer to the bottom of the stack or alternatively any way you would like to move it. And another thing that we can do is either show or hide our layers or our objects just by using this button right here, which is going to toggle the visibility. So we can go ahead and turn that 10 off as well as a jack. So I'll go ahead and just turn those back on for a moment. Another thing that we can do is we can double click on any of these layers if you want to rename that and just give that any name that you would like for each one of your cards or your layers. 
So if you find that you want to delete any of your layers for any reason, then we can do that simply by selecting any of these inside of our layers panel, coming down towards the bottom to where we have this trash can icon and simply go ahead and tap on our mouse, then that will delete your layer. And another way that we can do that is by selecting any of these on the canvas and hitting delete on your keyboard. And another thing that you can do is lock any one of your layers because at some point you may end up with hundreds of different layers that make up all of your design and you'll find that when you start moving things around you may accidentally select other objects at the same time. So it's always good to lock any layers that you don't want to disturb. So if we go ahead and select one of our layers over inside of our layers panel that we want to lock, we'll go ahead and we'll just choose this 10 right here. Just up here we have this padlock icon, if we go ahead and we select that, that's going to lock that layer, as you can see with that little padlock icon right there. Then if I go ahead and drag my mouse over all of these, it's going to select the first three right here, the Queen, King and Jack, but it won't select the 10 as that layer is now locked, so we can go ahead and move these around without disturbing that one. And if you want to go ahead and unlock that, then all we've got to do is turn that padlock back off inside of our layers panel. And now we can select all four of these once again and move them around. And another thing that you can do is once you start creating your designs, you are going to end up with multiple different layers that may be part of individual design elements, such as maybe drawing a head where you're going to have your head shape, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your nose, etc. And what you may want to do with all those individual parts that make up the head is group all of those together just so you can move that as a whole. And the way that you go ahead and group all of these together is by selecting all four of these layers. Once again, we can do this one of two ways. We can either select all of these with the mouse at the same time, or we can go in and grab our top one, hold down shift on our keyboard, select the one at the bottom, then that will select the others in between. And now the way that we would group these together is one of two ways. We can either right click on our mouse and we can choose the option right here to group then that will group all of these together inside of this one folder. And I'll just undo that for a moment. Another way of grouping these together is with a keyboard shortcut, and that is gonna be either using Command or Control and G. And now you can see we created this folder once again, which contains all of our individual cards or our layers or objects. And just like before, we can double tap on our group and you can rename that to be anything that you like. And the benefit of having all of these in the group is that we can go ahead with the group selected and move all of this as a whole. We can also resize this by grabbing the nodes around any of these edges and just dragging that out. And that will resize all of these at the same time. And if we go inside of our group with this little drop down arrow, we still have the option to move any of our layers around if you want to start putting these in a different order or freely just move these around with your mouse by selecting any of those and just start dragging them around. And now you can see that all of these are no longer aligned, but because they are still inside of our group, we can go ahead and still move that as a whole or resize them just like we did before. And you will find that you will use groups all of the time when you start designing your designs as it makes it so much easier when you have hundreds of different layers just to stay a little bit organized and find what you are looking for a lot quicker. So if you've decided that you no longer want any of your layers inside of a group, all you got to do to remove these is select all of the layers that you want to remove. So I'll grab all four of those and just drag them outside of the folder just at the top there. And now you can see that we no longer have those inside of a group and we have the group folder right there that we can go ahead and delete. Alternatively, the other way of doing that is by simply right clicking on our mouse and selecting the option to ungroup. This way is going to be a little bit better because it automatically removes the empty folder for us which contained the group originally. And another thing that we can do is change the size of these icons inside of our layers panel. And we can do that by simply selecting this hamburger menu just up here on the right hand side. And you can see we have the option to choose small thumbnails or medium or large. So that is dependent on how big you guys want that. And just like I said, this is the exact same process whether you are in Affinity Designer. We have all of the same options in terms of moving your layers around or selecting all of these and grouping them together with Command or Control G. And once again, I'll go ahead and open that in Affinity Photo. So although everything else is changing on the screen, we have different tools over here on the left hand side and inside of our context menu bar on the top here. And we have a few different options inside of our studio panels across Affinity Photo, Designer and Publisher. The one thing that does remain the same is going to be our layers. 
So like I said, everything you've learned at the beginning of this tutorial can be used whether you are an Affinity Publisher, Designer or Photo. So before I go ahead and end this video, I also want to mention that we do have some additional options inside of our Layers panel, such as the Opacity right here, where we can go ahead and we can adjust the visibility to make that a little bit dimmer or bring that back to 100% Opacity. And that's the same across any of your layers. We also have some blending modes inside of here, which is something that you would use when you come to create some projects. And we also have some options down here where we can create some masks as well as adjustments or effects or any kind of filters. And a couple of options over here as well where we can group our layers if you want to go ahead and do it that way by selecting all of these once again, then we can go ahead and group it with that little folder down there. Then next to that, we can go ahead and create ourselves a pixel layer or go ahead and delete that. And all of these effects down here are going to be dependent on the kind of project that you are creating. But I have created multiple different projects inside of Affinity Publisher, Designer and Photo, where I've used and talked about all of these different settings. So go ahead and check out all of my other videos on my channel as I do aim for every single one of my videos to be beginner friendly and I do my best to talk you through every single process that I take. So that is it for today's video. I hope you liked it and you found it useful and you've learned something new and I will see you in the next one.